of all the requests I get for videos, one about the Thames barges has been by far none of them. But I'm doing it anyway because I like Thames barges. A Thames barge is a type of cargo carrying vessel. There have been barges on the Thames for as long as London has had a port. They were the basic cargo carriers of the river, transporting goods to and from ships, from warehouses and riverside industries to wherever, whether in London or further afield. They were the absolute backbone of the Port of London. These flat-bottomed girls, they made the rocking world go round. The Thames barge is quite distinctive. Perhaps its most famous feature is the red spritsail. A sprit is a diagonal spar coming off the main mast. This has a lot of advantages. It makes the barge very manoeuvrable and can be folded out of the way during loading and unloading. It also means that the barge can be crewed by as few as two people. The hull shape too is designed for optimum versatility. They had a flat bottom which enabled them to float in shallow water and stay upright at low tide. This meant that they could get to places that no other craft could. In fact, even after the railways came to the docks, barges still held sway. The shape was refined in the 19th century. From 1862, barge races were held at the instigation of a refuse barge owner named Harry Dodd, and the winners would influence the boats that came after. While the basic configuration is fairly standard, there are narrow variants, known as cut barges, which were designed for canals. Although these vessels are known as Thames barges, they also worked the Medway and along the coast. The larger ones were seagoing and regularly sailed to continental Europe. They carried a huge variety of cargo. From bricks to coal to scrap iron to manure to grain to gunpowder, although obviously not all at the same time. Just about every industry based along the Thames would have had at least one. The bargemen themselves were something of an elite with their own ways and means. A bargeman not only had to be familiar with sailing his barge and navigating the river, but with the legal processes and paperwork necessary for transferring cargo. They would sometimes come into conflict with the dockers. It was in the dockers' best interests to get the cargo loaded as quickly as possible, and it was in the bargeman's best interests to get the most efficient use of space out of his boat. And these two aims could be mutually exclusive. Despite their antiquated appearance, they were still being built well into the 20th century. Xylonite here dates from 1926 and is named after an early form of plastic. For many industries, there simply wasn't anything to beat a good old-fashioned barge. And sailing vessels were still in use in industry as late as the 1970s. A few of them participated in the Dunkirk evacuation, being ideally suited to get close to shore. But lots of factors conspired to bring about the end of the old sailing barges. Ports changed, containerization reduced the need for handling of goods, and the barges just weren't suitable for that kind of work. Lorries, which had already been encroaching on their territory, gained the upper hand. Plenty of the old barges survive. Many have been fitted with motors, and now they work in a new industry, leisure. It's a far cry from the days when these vessels were ubiquitous around the south of England, but I like to think of it as just another kind of work. Hello all, I hope you enjoyed this video. I must admit, I don't know a huge amount about boats. They're not really in my, um, in my wheelhouse, so to speak, but I've wanted to talk about these lads for quite a while. If you did enjoy the video, then please do hit like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for more, and consider sharing with your friends, family, and more intelligent pets. And I'll see you again very soon. Cheerio!